In this video, I'd like to talk about analytic-driven optimization. Website or mobile app optimization basically means improving the aspects of your website or mobile app design so that you can bring more traffic and increase your conversions. In traffic optimization, we like to ask the question, where does the traffic come from? Who are your visitors? And how do you bring more visitors to your website or app? There are many techniques we can use, such as search engine optimization, where you can use on-page SEO or link building to increase the ranking of your website in the search engine organic results. You can also use paid search, such as Google Ads. You can also use referral websites or other sources. In conversion optimization, we like to ask the question, how does conversions happen? What did the visitors do and eventually make that purchase? How to convert more visitors into customers? User experience design and marketing can help you optimize conversion. What do you think is the average conversion rate across the web? The answer is surprisingly low, only 2%. Therefore, we need a conversion optimization, right? We want to improve the user experience and keep testing our marketing copies and designs so that we can increase the percentage of visitors who complete a desired event that is to convert. So what is analytic driven optimization process look like? First, we collect data and then we analyze the data and then we design something new and we experiment it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a better design. So then we go back to collect more data, analyze more, experiment more, and that process can go on and on until we find that winner design. So then we implement the changes. But we don't stop there. We keep collecting data and analyze, and we keep experimenting. There are five stages of analytic-driven optimization. We want to know who our visitors are, how do they behave via standard reports, we further analyze their activities using advanced reports. We set our conversion and goals and we design experiments and we measure it. And we can use multi-touch attribution to figure out which channels and methods are more effective. So the step one is standard reports. Analytic tools such as Google Analytics provide insights on audience, acquisition, and behavior. Audience reports tell us what technologies our users use. Are they a PC users or more like a Mac users? The acquisition report tells us how did they come to our website? Did they go through a referral website? Did they click an ad to come to our website? Did they find our website from organic search results? The behavior report tells us once the visitor come to our website, what did they do? Where did they look? how many pages they see, and from which page they exited. So the benefits of this insights is letting you know more about your visitors. So then you can increase the traffic, bring more such visitors, and increase your conversions. Step two is the events reports. Here we can further segment our audience into different groups and study their interest and behavior. For example, 18 to 24 year olds may behave differently than older age groups. They like different products and they have a different purchase process. We can integrate with Google Ads. We can tag events such as the user watching a video or download files. We can tag marketing campaigns, whether it's email campaign or like a pay-per-click ads campaign or display ads campaign. With this insight, we have more precise reports about our visitors. We can create customized reports and dashboards that shows a summary of our website performance. We can create email alerts and delivery. Step three is goals and conversion funnels. We can track conversions. For example, this picture shows us in the Google Merchandise Store, which is an e-commerce website. We can visualize the shopping cart conversion funnel, and we can study the cart abandonment, which is usually an issue for e-commerce company to tackle. And we can figure out which page the customer drops out the most. 
for example, we see the highest customer job out on the billing and shipping page. We want to see if there's a way for us to improve the design on that page, maybe make the steps going to the next payment page more obvious and make users easier to click next step. We want to take a look at the customer value and not just one time purchase. We would like to nurture that lifetime value. We we'll like to take a look at the pay-per-click return on ad spending. We want to see if our ad spending is cost effective. So the benefits here are we can optimize ad budgets. We can optimize our ad, finding the effective keywords. We can optimize the conversion funnel, such as a shopping cart. So conversion events or goals depends on different kinds of websites or mobile app. For e-commerce like Google Merchandise Store, the big conversion is, of course, a customer made a purchase. However, micro conversions such as sign up for a customer loyalty program also counts. Those are small steps towards a big success. For software as a service or SaaS, subscription is the big conversion and sign up for a trial account is micro conversion. For Legion, completing a Legion form, such as a customer filled out the form on Angie's list, he needs someone to help painting the house, and that is a big conversion to Legion, so that Angie's list can sell that information to multiple vendors and to contact this customer to propose their service. Even half-filled form, that's a micro-conversion. So then the Legion website can follow up or the vendors can follow up with the customer to see if they can still provide the service to the customer. For content websites such as CNN or weather.com, the big conversion would be at clicks and the micro conversion could be at display because we know that display ads usually pay less than the pay-per-click ads for content websites. Step four is the experiments. So there are many design elements we can test. There are call to actions such as the wording, the font size, the color of the button. There are also point of action assurance such as offering free delivery or security. You can use badges and such as news, special limited deals or sales. And you can use headlines, marketing copy or product descriptions. If you have a web form, you can try different types of fields, whether you should use a drop down list or a group of radio buttons and the length, the layout, and how do we handle the error. And for the layout and design, you can try different position, the group of content. You can try different combination of color scheme and you can test the images and videos. If your e-commerce website, you can take a look into your shopping cart design and how to optimize that checkout flow. So the benefit here, of course, is increased conversion rates. The screenshot on the left side here is an example in Google Optimize. There are five different versions being tested. One is original and four are the new designs and they each tested with the same visits, about 1300 visits. So the winner is the Roadrunner because it has the highest conversion rate of 52.2% and it's better than all the other versions, including the original. There are three types of experiment. The first one is AA testing. As the name shows, it compares two instances of the same design. And why do we do that? I'll explain in the next slide. The next one is split or A-B testing. A-B testing compared two different designs. One is the original and the other is the new design. The next one is the multivariate testing, where we concurrently test the discrete elements that span multiple pages or screens. AA testing, as the picture shows here, tests exactly two identical pages to see if they perform the same. So the goal here is to find no difference in conversions between these two variations. At times, if you don't find the same, then it shows that you may have some mechanical issues. Either your sample size is too small or your testing towards a method are not stable. So you use the AA testing to check the robustness and accuracy of your AB testing tool method. AA testing result also helps to set a baseline conversion rate for future AB tests. And you can use it to decide what is the minimum sample size that you should use for your AB testing. 
If it's too small, you may not have a stable or fair result to compare. A-B testing is like the picture shows. 50% of the visitors see variation A, where it has the orange content block and drives 23 conversion rate. And the other 50% of the visitors see variation B, where you have this green content block and results in 11% conversion rate. Which variation is better? Is variation A because it has the higher conversion rate. So if the variation B is the original design and the variation A is the new design, then it makes sense to roll out the variation A, the new design. So A-B testing compares how two different web page or app screens perform using a random sample of equal volume. One of them is the original design or control group as we use in the research studies, and the other one is the new design or the treatment group. A-B testing is the most common and most appropriate for small sites with relative less traffic. Multivariate testing as shown in this picture, for example, you have three layouts. One of them is the original one. So layout one looks like having a content and a right sidebar. And layout two has a content, no sidebar, but an image to the left of the content. And layout three has the content on top and sidebar and the image on the bottom. And the layout two with the highest conversion rate of 36% is the winner. So multivariate testing concurrently tests different elements that may the advantage is that you can test interactive effects. The disadvantage of multivariate testing is that it requires significant user traffic volume. So again, side by side, we compare AB versus multivariate testing. AB only tests one new variance at one time, right? In this case, this buy now button, we're testing the new color of red. In the multivariate testing, we test more than one element at the same time. In this case, we're testing the wording of the headline and the image for the icon. So whether it's ACME widgets or the one and only ACME widgets for the headline and the light bulb or gear for the image. So changes in layout, marketing copy, colors, images, very common that you want to test out. So let's take a look at an example of using experiments. Uh, let's say you have a website where you sell house cleaning services. You offer basic, deep, and detailed cleaning. And among them, the detailed cleaning is the most profitable, so you want to get more people to purchase. And most users land on your homepage, so this is the first page you want to use for testing. So for your experiment, you can create several new versions, such as you can create one with the big red highline for detail cleaning, or you can create one that you expand the benefits of the detail cleaning. You can create one where you put an icon next to the link to purchase detail cleaning. Once you set up and launch your experiment, you choose a random sample of your users to de see different pages, including the original one, the one with the red headline, the benefits, and the icon next to the link to purchase. Then you simply wait to see which page gets the highest percentage of users to purchase. Um, that is, in other words, the highest conversion rate. When you see which page drives the most conversions, you can make that one the live page for all the users. Here's a famous example of multivariate testing. Rumor says Marisa Mayer, when she was working at Google, she overheard two designers were arguing which shade of blue should be used for the Google icon. She's like, why only test two? She then ordered that 40 different shades of blue would be randomly shown to each 2.5% of the visitors of Google. Why 2.5%? It's the 100% divided by 40 different variants, including original shade of blue, and that equals 2.5%. So Google will know which color earned more clicks, and that's how the blue you see nowadays in the Google icon. That's how it was chosen. So this is an example of multivariate testing because multiple scenarios were tested at the same time. And of course, only companies with large volume like Google can afford to perform this kind of multivariate testing. There are many optimization tools, such as the popular SEO tools are Moz, or used to be SEO Moz, Crazy Egg, Clicktail, Screaming Frog. Most of them have very interesting names, you might notice. 
and that's because they use this as a marketing strategy to attract business to use their service. Keyword research tools, popular ones, including Google Ads Keyword Planner. You can use their Keyword Planner without even paying for the Google Ads and it's for free as long as you have a Google account. SEO Rush, Keyword Spy, they all let you see what keywords are your competitors are using and how approximately cost effective are they? How many searches and how many clicks generated? And then there's measuring tools for experiment, including Google Analytics and Google Optimize. And for those who doesn't like Google, Optimizely is a popular tool or Unbounce. Heat maps are very useful tools to perform your experiment. A heat map tracks mouse clicks and how far down your page the visitor look. It uses warm to cool color scale to display what content of the web pages click more or which area gets more attention. And we can see from the desktop copy and the mobile copy consistently on top are the heat areas. And for the web page where you have more space, the right side content also gets some attention. So what if you're not seeing much activity around your call to action? With the help of the heat map, you know where to move them to get more attention of your audience. Here's another example of heat map from Clicktail. And again, you can see the desktop version versus tablet version. They're consistent, but also slightly different. You can also see the performance of each different pages. For example, in the product page, you can see how many people click add to cart and how many add to wish list. Aside from heat map, user recording is another very useful tool to understand how users are using your website. It not only lets you see the actions in history, it actually allows you to watch the customer in action. This is Optimizely's experiment interface. You can see it has a original variation and it has a red button variation and it has a blue button variation. Each one of them are being seen by the equal amount of traffic, which is 33%. Each one of them are performed on the same three pages. And then we will see what conversion rate they drive in the end. If you're interested to learn more about experiment, I recommend these two books, The Experiment by Colin McFarland and The Always Be Testing book by Google. At the end of the day, experiment is an art. So it's very user experience focused. You want to ask the question, is the interface intuitive and easy to understand and use? Does it enforce a sense of trust? Is there a congruity between your brand position and what you're asking of the user? And you want to make sure your design is very user-centered. In order to do that, you have to understand your target customer deeply. You may want to create a persona and define the key attributes of your prospective customer. You want to keep doing user testing and assessing. And you want to create the process of experiment. You want to experiment only a couple things at a time so that you can avoid interference. You want to keep measuring your KPI. And then once you find a success, you roll out the changes incrementally so that you can avoid disastrous kind of impact. Because sometimes the 2% that you test your new design on actually behave differently than the 100% user base. You want to set expectations. Don't expect to see improvement with every test scenario you design many of them will fail. It turns out that your original design may still be the best. However, there still may be surprising outcomes. So testing is a long-term and ongoing commitment. Lastly, I would like to recommend a great presentation on optimization by the head of product at rent.com. So this presentation shows that how they use Optimizely and follow a process of optimization, finally able to lift their conversion. I hope you enjoy it.